uh, welcoming you all here today. Thank you all for making the time for those of you who have traveled so that we could be here today. I want you to all say, Womanjika! Womanjika! You have just articulated 2,000 generations of my ancestors' language to the word Womanjika. In recognizing and celebrating our shared history, we all have something to gain. And it is about a celebration, this coming together. Mr. Amir Bashir, Director of the Diaspora for the African Union. We recognize the need to build and sustain dynamic and multi beneficial partnership between the African continent and the African diaspora, including diaspora women, youth, and all segments of society in the diaspora to support the continental development. It is my honor to welcome all of you as we embark on a journey that only seven months ago it was only a vision. At this summit, we aim to create opportunities for those women to create networks between themselves, organizations, and institutions. In 2017, I and many of those working with diaspora still lament the fact that women and their stories are still missing. Women are still missing on the table, whether those tables are those of community meetings, policy spaces, or even leadership. And here, is where the African Diaspora Women's Summit comes in at such an important time, globally, within the diaspora space, and in Australia. And Victoria University is very proud to be the host for this inaugural African Diaspora Women Summit, along with the African Union and the Victorian State Government. I mentioned the opportunities and challenges for African women there is so much for myself and others to learn through the summit today and tomorrow that the learning begins. Thank you and welcome. Australia is our home. It's a very different concept because it's a concept that applies responsibilities to each of us. Those inspirational people sometimes are celebrities but just as impressive. The people in the community doing small things, taking small footsteps to make the world a better place. diversity for purpose of decoration or pottery can gather, but it wasn't. And he said, a crop closest to God. A barley builder should not die before visiting the God. Really? Do you think this area is useful? Yes, it is useful. The problem is you are not including the Lord. For those who don't know me, my name is Councillor Catherine Cumming. I'm the Mayor of the City of Maribyrnong which is the best council in Australia. <laughs> I went to St Monica's School in Footscray. 108 children and 54 different nationalities. But we need to support each other. We are one community. We're all humans. And the people who try to divide us in all different boxes by saying whatever, they're just so wrong. But I absolutely love this African community. I feel your struggles in the way that how the media is so disrespectful. Training, more courses, better access to education, <coughs> and internship, and support from the leaders from various sectors. In doing that, the Victorian government currently is really focused in terms of empowering African youth and women in various levels and support. Engage in strategic conversation about how to make a better life for African Australians, including African women and children, 
and one of the key drivers of the Victoria Multicultural Commission. And we need to do better to empower African women and young people across all spectrum. Every woman here from the African diaspora to know the BMC is proud to stand with you every step of the way. And at any stage, we can do that. I have people who say, no, follow your dreams. So, uh, my name is Nelly Yaw, and uh, I'm at, at Cali at Collingwood Football Club, and I also work with uh, a non-profit organisation, Afri-Lots <laughs> <laughs> Um Why are you a young man and seen at an inaugural women's summit? It's important for young men such as myself to have an understanding of what's happening. The dishes and do this and say, oh, this is not Uganda. I say, yes. <laughs> Our school is working closely with Mount City Council to develop that understanding of programs in the area for young people who have a This summit is launching, which is about empowering the voices that African women have and young African women at, uh, at schools in Victoria, in Melbourne Secondary College, obviously have an enormous part to play, and for us to achieve our vision of a flourishing community, it's, uh, it's critical that we listen to them as well. So thank you very much. That's not an excuse to stand yes. up. Yes. 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 If you are to be in that leadership role, I'm a witness, I teach at a high school, you have to work Dump as much, if not three times as much as normal. And no. So, all what I can say in leadership, the way I work with the young people, we have got about 70 young people, the Black Rhinos, it's working with them as a leader. Work with these young people and you will be successful. Mm -hmm. To listen to my people and take the decision together. Like, as a group or as a community, we need to be together and work hard and just educate you know so you have to be a good follower yourself you will rise you stand up and go move on, on. Yeah. so you move on so that's a harsh truth so you won't be successful every time with the children please if they are we are parents here you need to work with your children as i've said before most of, uh, uh, most of the parents we are good at imposing, like, I want you to become a doctor, I want you to become a nurse, I want you to become this. You are driving your children mental. Any one last word that each of you wants to intense and share with our audience? I would just like to say, like, especially to the girls here, you can really be all you want to be. So while they're working on their thesis, the men are doing more publications than women at all of the time at once. And they're doing more publications than they've spent more time doing their thesis. Most dramatically, after they've submitted their thesis, men outstrip them considerably. Doing many thesis. Wow. If you're a woman with a male supervisor, 5% less than a man, if you can score a female supervisor pretty hard in the of physics, almost 30% more publications. With women, mentorship is key. Having a supporter is key. Now, like I explained in the beginning, that the reason why it's becoming a focus is because nutrients can be extracted from wastewater for growth, which can then be used for anaerobic digestion. It's perhaps worth noting the hepatitis B is passed down mother to child, so artific advances. And more recently, uh, hepatitis C, the other main form of viral hepatitis, that they can lead to uh, liver disease and liver cancer. And that's the fastest growing cause of cancer death in Australia, liver cancer. Um, hi everyone, I'm Maya Se. So I'm a business 
analyst. I work for a software engineering company. Hi everyone, my name is Lorraine Quena and I am also from Zimbabwe. Um, I run workshops around employment, leadership and personal development. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sarah Kola. Um, I am Nigerian but I was born in Canada. Uh, but at the moment um, I run a company called M-Time, so we match um, families with people who help them out with household needs. The first task is taking the first step exam. The challenges that you've come across but with taking action, trial and error, it becomes clearer what you want to do and where you want to go. Mentors are everything people, but in your core, you need to be sure about who you are, what type of a leader you are. But, you, but confidence actually comes from, from taking action. So you just take small <coughs> actions and it builds up to bigger and bigger things. Yeah. Yeah. So think about what are my skills, right? And how can I get in and just step out and do it? Okay, I live in Melbourne, but one of the most multicultural cities in the world. You know, I'm, I'm such a doer, you know, I'm, I'm always on the go doing something. And not being able to do just really was affecting me. So just keep on being focused on what you want to achieve and have that strong sense of self and acceptance of who you are and what you want to do. The most important thing is not to be afraid to fail. And when you fail, you learn something from it, maybe you pivot, you start it another way, you think about it another way, you talk to other people, maybe you're talking to the wrong type of people, or you just need something else. But that's I think, for me, I, said, I call myself a visionary storyteller. And what does that mean? It means that you have passion. And that passion fuels the purpose of your life. And once you get that, and I think that's where most cases, we don't have the clarity. But once we tap into that clarity of having a passion, it puts you into, into the purpose field. Don't hold people back. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we can all... Like edu education is it's, it's not just degrees. You're always going to have to know, know your art. Because there's a billion other people trying to do something. Yeah. What makes you stand up? Know your art. So educate yourself in whatever way you need to. If you have conventional education, going to uni or TAFE, whatever, but also your talent for people is also an education. So be conscious also about that. So I will try and leave this with Mimi. So if anybody wants to get the copy, that should then be fine. Yeah, things have changed. I just put up a, a couple of slides to show how things have changed around the world, whether you are looking for a job or you are looking for promotion. That was a question posed to my former bishop, Nami Day, when he went for his interview. <laughs> and the question was, are you able to perform your duties in this role? Anybody who has gone for an interview would know that you, you wouldn't be able to get away getting a job with that kind of answer. Keep going, please. <laughs> the fact was, he got the job. And today, and when he told, told us this in church, he said he was surprised that he got the job and what children now have to go through if he get the, a smaller job than being a bishop. So it, it, things have changed. And when I started, went for a briefing before I applied for my promotion to level D, which is associate professorship about 10 years ago. Um, this was what the chairperson told us. She said they value the university valued our contribution and would like to read successful promotion applications. Uh, useful resources that you could uh, but there are so many on the internet get involved with these networks and learn from those uh, sources. Um, I'll tag this one, I don't have a copy of that. My name is Anika Nibelt, I was born in Zambia and lived in Australia. My background is in journalism, I just write all this book. <laughs> 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 I run my own um, Center for Leadership and Management. She's shaking her head. <laughs> so it's the Center for Leadership and Management, and we have sort of like divided it into. So uh, part of it is where we run programs for young people and uh, young women in particular in schools and universities, and also at our center. And then the other part is uh, the TV programs 
where we do inspired conversations and we are currently um, broadcasting in Perth. So talking about uh, women in leadership, so I would say that uh, I'm a storyteller and my journey started when I was 10 years old in Zambia. So um, I was a girl child advocate and that was my introductions to the works of the United Nations. And then, yeah, so sort of like just growing up and then came to Australia, worked with ABC, worked with Wangari Radio. And then I was also a young social pioneer with a foundation for young Australians. And that's when I decided to um, develop my own program and become independent after working with the Australian government. So women in leadership, it's kind of like... And when I went natural 10 years ago in Australia, there was just nothing you could get locally for your hair. So I started making products um, a couple of years ago to fill that need for the Australian market. And my um, um, brand is Moisha Lava Hair. You can find the love later. But I thought today we could quickly have a look at the experience of the 20 million men and women that were forcibly taken from Africa. Just tracing it in terms of their natural hair. Like I see a lot of natural hair. Oh, and yes. I'm just wondering what yeah. that's yeah. awesome, that's yeah. something that's yeah. quite new yeah. and it's impressive to see it in Melbourne. I actually don't even know too many people that have straight hair anymore. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I can see for them it was a very different experience where it wasn't really a style option, it was something that they have to do. And this time, going natural has nothing to do with being with politics, but everything to do with being that comfortable in your own skin and as a god in your right. So thank you for listening. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hair is political and uh, so just to hear even the conversations about our hair mm. being talked about in academic circles is really really important because we need to show up to work like this, you know, and with my changing hairstyles every single day. Especially for putting this um, summit together, I think it's tremendous and looking at this Booklet. I think what is so encouraging is governments at all levels are looking at this issue. Family violence, whether it's at local government, so all states and territories have, have a need and a want to try and bring these terrible statistics down, especially against the violence against women and children. There are so many different communities coming to Victoria over so many years and have achieved so much. I'm just quoting all these words because I love them. A great way for all young women to aspire to Continue to strengthen the girl child to be all she dreams of. Uh, well done to you all and keep dreaming. Thank you. What we're doing is we're asking a few of the speakers to actually have a chat with you one on one. So it's a very informal mentoring session. On the other side, which is opposite the mentor, will be the mentees. Ask them some questions that are going to help you with your own professional or personal development. <coughs> Anyone who would like to ask to volunteer, you know. I'm like saying do as I do as I say, not as I Cheryl do. Cheryly. You're my tour mentor. Could I get yeah, you? Yeah, you're yeah, the key Networking and food, dinner. I think we're all very tired. We've been here all day. I want you to give yourselves a big clap. <laughs> there's more to share, there's more conversations to be had. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you.